Hey everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do hit subscribe and you know smash the notification bell so you will be hopefully notified each time there's a new upload. And if you're a returning subscriber, please do like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. And you know, please do comment below this video so I know that you have seen it. This is part of the 25 days of comic book reviews. <coughs> Pardon me. On the 11th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Exorcist's number one from Image. <laughs> this is a new series from Image Comics titled Exorcisters. And let's see, when did this come out? Uh, October, I think it was. I don't remember. I think it was October. And this is I. I bought this as a curiosity, and I saw the cover, and I saw the. the the variant cover, which it was nice, but I didn't didn't interest me enough to buy the variant. So I picked this up and I took it home because I wasn't sure what to think. Because the cover portrays two girls. It's almost like they they're sitting in different dimensions or something because you see one here and I forget, forget what this is in her hair but you turn it around and then whereas that one is studying this one's you know playing a guitar a guitar so that aside I decided check this comic out because I looked at the artwork in in the store and really liked it this uh, story opens up with two getting married and all of a sudden the groom appears to be shackled with some uh, supernatural type chains here because then a demon from out of nowhere appears and says, Glenn Weber, you owe a debt to hell and the time has come to pay. And you can see the man there you know, appears to be shackled and the you know bride is trying to get him loose or at least she thinks she's trying. And the People there just, you know, they're dumbstruck. They don't know what to do. Just see, see him sitting there. And the uh, big red guy makes the pride fall because over the page, we see the red demon say, Know that the one you love will suffer forever. Gloria, I'll always. And, you know, it's a really dramatic opening. And she's recounting, recounting all this to the two girls, who, interestingly enough, are named Kate and Kate. One of them ha starts with a C, and the other one starts with a K. And I can't remember which. Oh yeah, that one starts with a K. That one starts with a C. Kate and Kate. And the this one, she just keeps enjoying the champagne that didn't get touched there at the at the wedding banquet. And she says, Kate. But the wedding's off. All this was going to go to waste. 
So she says, go on. And she tells about how she called the police and they didn't believe her. Thought she was probably just left at the altar. And the priest here, or he, well, he goes by the name of Father Manny. He is the only one who believed her because he's worked on a few cases with the the girls before. And their last names are Harrow. H-A-R-R-O-W. Kate and Kate Harrow. And then this one gets down on the ground and sniffs it. It says, smells like a mixture of, of, of sulfur and tragedy. A demon was recently... A demon was here recently, and that that one just cannot stop eating the wet the 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 stuff from the wedding because she started in on the wedding cake. She says, "Don't worry, you're in good hands. We get fiancés fiancés back from hell all the time for a very reasonable rate." Where'd you get the cake? And she points over to the <clears throat> wedding cake that didn't get touched. Uh, so they ask, you know, access to her fiance's computer. And so that one, you know, the one that was eating, uh, drinking, and eating, said, uh, "Any weird porn on his laptop?" And she says. No porn at all. She says, wow, that is creepy. Agreed. <laughs> and so, they tell the, the, the woman that they found a bunch of message boards that the husband had been to, which were occult message boards. And they remarked that Demons troll message boards looking for souls. And so they are going to go check out some of their sources. But meanwhile, over the page, I really have no idea where this is. But it's a bar that's dimly lit. And I don't know who this is. But I know that it's uh, it's some it's, it's some lady who's probably drunk, because she says, "I bet you a bottle of Jack. I've done something worse than you." He says, "Trust me, you haven't." She says, "Then take the bet." And the man says, "Well, you don't want to know what he says." And then she whispers into his ear what she did and he leaves slamming the door and she has a bo the bottle of Jack now back at the uh, office of Kate and Kate Harrow they uh, I don't know why she's doing that to the fish so they're they Apparently they work in the supernatural because this this one is able to open up a gate to hell. And this is while while that may make some people go hmm. This is not without an element of humor because look at how tall these girls are. And look at the size of that gate. <laughs> I could not help but laugh when I first read this. And she's looking at her. Says, I don't have enough energy to make another one for a few hours. This will have to do then. Son of a... Then and she lands inside something. Looks like a big fruit with arms and legs. And the other one lands. 
and says, you really want to spit her out, trust me, on this. And all of a sudden, the whatever it is goes pop, and she is soaked. And the other one says, I'm sorry you ended up in that thing's mouth, and wait for it. She says, it wasn't its mouth. <laughs> oh gosh, that's hysterical. And then they cross, uh, they come across something that's like an imp or something. It's really annoying, so that one just kicks him and he goes, he goes flying. Then they stop and there's, looks like they're standing on some big eye, because you see, if you see this now, leave now, face, damnation eternal. And you would think, you know, that sounds scary. But the girls go, stop, <laughs> on the eye. And it's an actual creature. It says, Ow, oh, it's you. I didn't, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> and so they tell him, you know, what they're, what the, that they're looking for the soul of Glenn Weber. And then he says, he's not in hell. And he says, have you checked heaven, limbo, Canada? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that really get, that really got me laughing. And then they come across this scene. Yeah, you know, this is a demon wearing a pink dress and holding a dolly. And so that one says, "Whoa, what's going on there?" Because you have to admit this does look odd. You know, a, a demon wearing a pink dress and holding a dolly. So over the page, the eyeball guy explains. Yeah, that's as F. Adele, a demon lord. He tried possessing a little girl but got distracted and did the binding spell backwards. You're a bunny, he says. And the eyeball guy goes on to explain. And now the six-year-old girl is possessing him and has control over all his powers. Hi, would you like to come to my tea party? And she says, we can't, but he'd love to. And so he's dragged inside. He's like, what? No! And <laughs> I, I could not help but laugh at this. Because it, it was just, just, it's just so funny. And so that one got back through the, the, the gate all right. And the other one says, damn it, I'm stuck. And she says... You know who you look like? And she says, Say way the poo and I'll murder you repeatedly. <laughs> but then they uh they're this this one's calling Gloria because they have a hunch. And she's taken them to this empty house that was meant to be sold. And yeah, you know, that that one who has the Chinese uh, stick or chop or uh, in her hair says, "Glenn's not in hell, so he has to be somewhere else." I checked up on the vacant houses you and he were selling, and the other one says, "We looked in the window and found him." What do you think you're doing? I'm calling the police. Gloria! Glenn! 
and over the page. She's so happy to see him. She hu she hugs him. You're all right. Thank God I was so. And then that one says, "Don't be thanking God just yet." Kate found it hiding in the closet, and this is a little uh, a weird creature. And Glory says, what is that thing? It's nothing, Glenn says. Says, when someone, most, most of the time when someone says, it's nothing, then it's generally something. And Gloria sees this pile of cash here. Is that a sack of money? How did you get that? And the, this one says, short answer, your fiance is an asshole. Now, the long, boring answer. Kate? And the long, boring answer is quite interesting. You remember that uh, they found, yeah, you know, that he had visited some occult message boards on his laptop? Well, apparently, he met uh, this type of demon who they call a sorrow sucker which means if he gets near anybody that has any type of sorrow he will suck the sorrow out of them and he feeds on it and in, t in return he grants the person something and, and, and she says this is roughly translated as sorrow sucker. It feeds on sadness and pain and grants wealth and power to the one that p supplies it. And so ba basically, Glenn here, the all-American type looking guy, says, that's crazy. And the, and the other girl says, uh, For every lie you tell, I'm going to take two of your teeth. So basically what this uh, sorrow sucker did was he made, er he made Gloria think that Glenn was being taken to hell. And he... And he and this th creature made the people there think that she had just been le left at the altar, which would also cause her sorrow and grief, which she could have fed on. And uh, she says he needed some place to hide out until he could change his identity and enjoy that wealth. Lucky for him, he had the keys to this unsellable house. Then over the page, Gloria's like, But you loved me! And he says, No, I never really did. And she starts crying, and then the sorrow sucker says, Yum! And then she goes, Crack! Right across his face. And then he, and then he has pain from the, you know, the smack across the face. And the sorrow suck, sucker says, Num, num, num. And uh, then, since Gloria no longer has sorrow, then everything that he that he had here is gone because now she's feeling anger at what he did, and then over the page the sorrow sucker latches on to him because he's lost all of the money he was hit by her so he's experiencing lo loss of his material possessions and still the pain of the st sting on his face and uh, she says taking the house off the market giving it to Glenn as a wedding present and so he's stuck there with the sorrow sucker. <laughs> now back at the offices, offices of K. 
Kate and Kate Harrow. They get a knock, knock at the door. And she says, Mother, Kate? And then she says, Hey, my sister told you. Never, and told you she never wants to see you again. Get out. And then she says something that, you know, really shocked me. This is why I, I referred to him as, you know, that girl and, the, and this girl. The mother says, you're not her sister. You're her soul. And we need to talk about the end of the world. So apparently, she is the soul of her. And it's quite interesting to me because she is the polar opposite of her. Because if you look at this girl, she's dressed very, very, not formally, but she's well dressed. And this one is not not so well dressed and her hair's you know wild and hers is up in a some type of bun and it was a really good story and I love the art and then in the back of the issue there's a two page article you know I'm talking about it, and it was really, a, it was it was a really fun story to read, and that's something that I don't see as often in comic books. Sometimes I read a story, and I was like, "Well, that was a." waste of 15 minutes because I take my time reading so that was my review of Exor Sisters number one from Image Comics I loved it it was fun all the way through the art was beautiful and the storyline was great you know the pacing was was such that it kept me interested all the way through I loved it I would give it, you know, five stars. I would recommend that you go out to your local comic shop and say, I want to get a copy of this. Because hopefully you will enjoy it. I'm not a big fan of Image Comics, but I saw this and I just had to check it out because I thought the title was interesting. And the art and the art was interesting. I mean, how can how how can anyone not be interested in a comic book that has a giant red demon in a pink frilly dress? <laughs> that was just hysterical. So, what did you guys think? Did you enjoy this? Did you buy it? And if you did, did you, did you did you like it or did you not like it? Leave your comments down below. Also, please like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. And, you know, like I said, please do leave your comments down below because that does help the channel out. I am Michael for Spirit Comics. Till next time, true readers.